All right, let's go through the buttons on the EDM machine. First off, we have the emergency stop button, the start button, the stop button, the abort or reset button, machine on and machine off. Now, on to remote controls. On top of the control, we have the manual button. This button has to be switched on before using the controls. It is a safety feature so that if accidentally pressed, it won't work. Next, we have the buttons that control the X, Y and Z axis and C which controls the angular direction. Now, these two buttons controls the height of the dielectric tank. These three buttons at the bottom controls the speed of the machine, starting with the slowest on the left to the fastest on the right. Next, we have the two buttons which controls the height of the dielectric fluid in the tank. Let's start with the input of the program. Create your file by entering the name that you want and click the arrow button. Select empty job followed by the tick button. Let's move on to the job section. On the left, we have the tools list, which is the number of tool used in the single profile. For this example, I will be using two tools. I have named them four and five, but you can use any number you want. Four will be the roughing and five will be the finishing. The parts list is the number of parts you will spark for this job. In this example, I will be sparking on one part. On the cavities list is the number of profiles you will be sparking. I will be sparking with a single profile. Generally, there will be two passes, one for the roughing and second for the finishing. The comment column is for any comments on the tool, while the job comment section is for the whole job. Now, on to the tools section. On the left, name your roughing and finishing tool followed by creating a probe on any row. The letter U is the distance between the electrode and workpiece during sparking process. Usually, 0.2mm is for roughing and 0.1 is for finishing. The symbol is for machining pass, choosing which tool you want it to use first. My roughing tool will come in first, followed by the finishing tool. Next, click on machining pass on the probe, followed by clicking button F3. A pop-up will be shown, and followed by choosing the measuring tool on it. Magazine position simply means the position of your tool that is located in the magazine tool storage. Next, we will be doing a reference ball measurement. Click on Tool Change to call in for the probe tool. To find your tool number, simply go back to the tool section and look on the left side of the screen to find your tool number. Next, click on the tick button and press start button. A tool change will look something like this. Now, click on Reference Ball Measurement followed by inputting a calculated number. So, for this example, 6mm is calculated. How? 3mm will be an allowance distance that acts as a safety distance so that the probe will not crash. 1.5mm will be the reference probe radius and also 1.5mm is the probe radius. Afterwards, position your probe exactly like it is shown in the picture. Keep a habit of giving an allowance of 3mm so that the probe will not crash. Once positioned, click on the next button and start button afterwards. The process will look something like this. Once the measuring cycle is completed, click on the exit button. The next measurement we'll be doing is tool alignment, so we will have to call in for the first tool, that is the roughing tool. 
click on the tick button followed by the start button to change the tool. To know that your tool has changed, a green light will be shown next to the tool under the tool section. Next, click on tool alignment 1 under tool measure. C is the position that you choose for this alignment. I am choosing C4. This example, the calculated input is 6mm. To find it, simply minus off the radius of the probe on both sides from the length of the workpiece. After that, position your electrode at the position you've chosen. Click on the next button followed by the start button. Remember to give an allowance of 3mm so that the electrode will not crash with the probe. A tool alignment will look something like this. Once the measuring cycle has completed, take note of the angle alignment offset before exiting. Now, we'll be doing tool offset. Click on tool offset 1 under tool measure. You will need to input a distance for x and y. To find out the distance, simply add up the probe radius, allowance and half the length of the electrode used. This is a clearer view of how it is calculated. Bring the electrode to the position shown in the picture using the X, Y and Z controls. And remember not to bring it too close to the probe. Click start to start the cycle. The measuring cycle will look something like this. Once the measuring cycle has completed, Click on the exit button. For the finishing tool, the same process will be done. Now, on to the parts section. After naming your part under the part name, you will need to do a part change. Simply click on part change and enter your part number. After clicking the tick button followed by the start button, you will notice a yellow message at the bottom of the screen. After this message has shown, click on the start button again. To know that your part has changed, a green light will be shown next to your part name. Before we do a part alignment, we need to change the tool to a probe. After changing, click on part alignment 1 under part measure. C is the position for the alignment. I have chosen C1. The calculation for I is the same as the tool alignment in the tool section. Bring the probe to the position that you have chosen in the picture. Again, importance of allowance is not to damage the probe and workpiece. XYZ does not need to be checked. Press the next and the start button to start the alignment cycle. Part alignment cycle will look something like this. Once completed, exit to the part section. Next, click on external centering 1 under part measure. Enter a value for x and y. To find this value, add up half the length of the workpiece and an allowance distance. Check the boxes for x, y and z, followed by clicking the next button. Click the start button to start external centering. The external center cycle will look something like this. Once it is done, exit the cycle. Let's go to the cavity section now. Enter the X and Y value for the position of your profile on the workpiece. Why is X negative, you ask? It's because X is along the negative side of the workpiece.
Next, we have sequence section. To generate the sequence, click on this button. Afterwards, click on the ISO generation complete button to generate the ISO and click the tick button. A quick tip, every time you make changes to the program, do not forget to generate the ISO again. Now, select the execution button at the bottom. On the configuration section, the green light on the button means that actual sparking is turned on. If you want to do a dry run on your program, simply click on the button to turn off the light and your program will be on dry run. To start the sparking process or the dry run, press the start button afterwards. During sparking, you can take a look at the graph of your process under the gap section. On the follow up tab, you can monitor the progression of the sparking process in real time like the depth of the workpiece that has been cut and more.